Hello and welcome to Kismet Rising. So today I'm doing your weekly oracle card guidance and I've decided to use the Madame Mandora's fortune cards. Um, it feels like it's such a, it has such a variety of energy, you know, it has such a range um, from very lighthearted as well as quite a deep um, energy or deep feelings. So I felt that uh, today I was kind of torn between using some of Ilana Fairchild's oracle cards but it felt like this one was going to encompass all the different um, kind of energies that would come to this reading. Uh, so that's why I'm just using one deck today. And we have three options. And I've uh, rated my uh, daughter's toys once again. And so it's these emojis. Uh, so this is the option number one here. And then the option number two is the sloth. And uh, the option number three is this one here. So take a moment um, to choose what you, what you feel drawn to and um, you may go down to the description box where you'll find the timestamp. And I'm going to start already with the option number one. So you may pause the video at this point if you need to. So for those of you who've chosen this option here, what is it that you've that you need to hear right now? What is it that you've come here to hear, which would help you as you go along this week. So I'm going to give these cards a shuffle. There's one poking out right here, and I'm just going to take that. And it's the green man. The forces of nature favor you. All right, so um, what I'm getting here is that you might have been going through some difficulties in the recent while. I feel like in the in the recent past, you might have actually encountered some some challenges, some difficulties. It might have been a strenuous time for you. And it might have been um, something that you, at moments that you felt it was not within your grasp. And what this card is saying to me is that this period is behind you right now and it's actually going to be a lot easier as you go along. So the next period, it, this is not to say that, uh, you know, you're never going to have challenges again or it's, it's all going to be okay for the rest of your life. But this period that's coming up before you the next few weeks between three and six weeks is actually going to be easier than what you've encountered or what you've dealt with in the last few uh, months. I'm also hearing here that you might expect um, when I say this that things are going to start taking off or things are going to start moving ahead quite vigorously, but it's not going to. That is to say that it might actually just be a, a lot, just, just a lot smoother right now, not necessarily moving ahead in, in a robust manner, but things are going to be more peaceful, easier to, to deal with. And the other thing I'm hearing here is that in order to be able to appreciate what's actually happening right now, what's going on, or this next phase that's coming into you, you need to slow down a bit and you need to just take it easy and not be so anxious or not be so worried. Um, just curb your anxiety is what I'm hearing. This is a, a phrase that keeps coming to me now. Uh, be in the moment or just retract, actually. It says retract. Uh, so I feel it's more, it's like the image I'm getting is like, um, step, take a step back away from others and just go into yourself for a moment and uh, be, you know, don't be anxious. Don't be, um, keep your ambition in check. Okay, so this is not to say that you shouldn't be ambitious or you shouldn't be excited or working towards something, but don't be too anxious for the end result. Uh, it's like the old adage, you know, enjoy the journey or life is, is a journey. Basically, don't be so focused on the destination, but rather at where you are right now. This message, the forces of nature favor you, it's quite conditional. It's conditional upon you being in touch with yourself or in touch with um with that part of you which is um, calm and in tune with the universe. So if you're actually not calm, or if you're struggling with any kind of anxiety or you you're feeling very impatient, this energy is going to work against you. If you go along right now as 
it's supposed to or as you as nature expects you to or as if you let things unfold naturally okay uh, you will find the wisdom of it much later on so you know if you have some some things that are happening right now in your life in the next week or so between now and about the end of three weeks if you find that there are some things that are taking place or some things that are unfolding and you can't quite make sense of it right now then you're going to find that later on it's going to make a lot of sense the way that things have been going on. You know, what I'm hearing is that don't be disappointed about anything right now because it's all happening in the highest good. It, it isn't always happening in your highest good, okay? This is, it's sometimes, in most of the time, it's it's uh, whatever is unfolding is unfolding in the greatest good of all. But right now, what you, what's going to happen is actually really favoring you and is going to unfold quite beautifully in the future. And you're going to understand the wisdom of it much later on. So um, that is basically what I'm getting uh, when I pick up this card here. I'm just going to take a moment and see if there's anything else here. Okay, so the other thing I'm hearing here is that this is a great time for you to measure yourself or to understand yourself, to understand your motivations, to understand uh, how it is that you react to certain things in your life and how it is that you approach uh, certain aspects of your life, whether it be your routines, whether it be your studies or your work or your parents or your relationships in general. It is a useful time in which to observe yourself because what you're going to find is that you have patterns of uh, behavior in the way in which you react to certain things. And you're going to understand that embedded in that a whole a range of compacted motivations and if you are able to recognize that then you're able to unpack some of those uh, motivations or un, un, yeah, basically unpack your your attitudes or your behavior and you can find that you are able to approach things in a more uh, in a fresher way or in a way that is um, more true to the situation so some of the um, some of these behaviors have been learned or they've been in practice for a long, long time. And if you simply observe the way in which you're going about behaving or the responses that you have uh, in these various situations, you're going to realize that you don't really need to be behaving in that way any longer or that a more efficient response is um, is required. Uh, I'll, I'll give you an example, perhaps that will explain it. So if you always, uh, if you have a habit or a a certain kind of attitude or a certain learned behavior that is in response to you um, going to work every day or getting to work on time every day. Or as an, another example, the way in which you feel when you need to study. What you actually need to do is go back and look at where that kind of behavior came from. You know, at which point did you start reacting the way you did you know where does your anxiety stem from and this word anxiety keeps coming up for this re for this particular reading so where does your anxiety stem from so if you have anxiety with regard to your studies or if you have anxiety with regard to you know getting to work on time and these are just two examples by the way so you know you have to go back and understand where what is the source of that and recognize that you need not necessarily feel anxious when you need to when you have to get ready to get to work or when you need to focus on your studies because this is some kind of learned behavior that you've been acting out for a long long time and it's it's no longer relevant in your life because you can't just plan ahead and ensure that you get to work on time or in these examples that I'm giving you or even find a new reason or a new way in which to approach your studies so that you don't feel this level of anxiety. Yeah, once again, those are just two examples that I'm giving you, but it's basically understanding your your motivations behind certain learned behavior that you are exhibiting on a regular basis. And this is a very good time for you to do that. So the next few weeks are a really good time for you to, to come to terms with that, to understand what who is it that I am and how am I behaving in this uh, situation? Am I behaving in this situation because that's my true response to it? Or is it a learned behavior that I am constantly repeating in, in my life with regard to different people or different situations or with regard to any particular thing in my life? And the forces of nature favor you is talking about the fact that now is the time for you to basically address some of those learned behaviors and work with them and see if they need to stay or see if they need 
to perhaps be discarded or perhaps there needs to be a new habit that's brought into place, a new learned behavior. Yeah, so that is that is the other meaning here. Or perhaps it feels like a lot of the, like both these meanings that I've given you now uh, will apply to a lot of you. And once again, those are just examples. I feel like I need to stress that. And um, yeah, but I do feel that this is actually a really nice time for you. I feel that this is a really an amazing, quiet time for you. And in fact, in the next few weeks is going to be fairly uh, balanced in the way in which it unfolds. So um, that is your message for you, uh, for those of you who chose the option number one uh, today. Sometimes, yeah, I hope that that's helped you. Okay, moving on to the option number two. So the option number two is the sloth that we have here today. The question we're asking is, what is it that you need to know right now? What is it that you've come here to here today? Okay, so I'm just going to give these cards a shuffle. I'm using a very tight angle today because I'm not really shooting, as you can see, on the, on the desk that I usually use. And uh, so you can't really see me shuffling very well. Okay, so that's the card here. The hourglass, time is of the essence. It's quite in contrast to the last message I've heard. The last message was very much about allowing things to unfold uh, naturally and ridding oneself of anxiety. But here, it almost feels to me like one needs to understand that the goals that one's created for oneself, the, the target that one wants to reach, uh, requires a, a different set of rules or a different uh, approach or different pathway to reach. Basically, there are a couple of messages that I'm getting here right now. The first is that uh, wherever you need to get to, you need to find a more efficient way of getting there. And you need to be quite observant of time. So yeah, the message is time is of the essence. And there's this hourglass. So this message, there's like different aspects to it. One of the aspects here is that there's a kind of focus on procrastination and just not being able to reconcile one's behavior or one's attitude or one's daily kind of activities with one's goals, one's where one wants to be at. So it might be that you dream of being in a different home or living in a different place, uh, or you, you dream of being in a different job or... You dream, you dream of being in another situation, almost like the, gr the grass is greener on the other side. But but your your daily activities or what you do with your, with your life or how you spend your time is not actually uh, in accordance with those things that you dream about. It's not leading you there. It's not actually bringing you to that point. And it's almost as if um, in the way in which you you live your life right now, you aren't going to reach your goals. So the very strong message of this card is, you know, take a piece of paper, uh, write it down if you need to, because this is going to be the most efficient way. And oh, if you don't have, use a piece of paper, a chalkboard or some kind of whiteboard or, or whatever you choose, know where it is that you see yourself or what it is that will make you happy. OK, so some of you may do this in terms of goals, like five year planning sessions or 10 year planning sessions. And others may look at it as what's going to bring me the most amount of joy. Or how do I need to tweak my home environment so that I feel more comfortable here? Or what skills do I need to actually acquire in order to be able to do the things that I desire? And how is it that I'm going to get there? How is it that I'm going to finance it? How is it that I'm going to find the time to actually get there? So these are the kind of questions that you need to be asking right now. Because what they are saying and what the picture and this, this the whole essence of this card is that time is passing and this is time that you can't really get back. So if you're feeling unsatisfied or feeling um, unsettled where you are right now, it's time to actually just put um, put a plan in place as to how you're going to get to where you need to go to. The other thing I'm hearing here is that some of the emotions, some of the feelings that you have is directly related to your frustration or your um you're feeling that you're not exactly where you need to be at. And so if you start taking small steps towards moving to where you need to be at or where you where you actually truly desire uh, being in your life, then you're going to find that you're feeling a, a lot happier and you have a lot more energy on a day-to-day -day basis. 
because you have you're making steps towards getting to where you need to. The other message I'm getting here is that some of you feel like this desire that you have or this this um this place that you want to get to in your life is is something unattainable. It's like you have quite a forlorn feeling about you. It's like, oh, yes, I want to get there. And yes, I want to do that, but I can't. I, how am I going to get there? I can't afford it. Or I just don't have the time. Or I just don't have the capacity. Or I can't do this alone. And so there's all these different feelings that are coming up right now. And this stops you from actually being able to even plan. And I want to say that for those of you who are um, feeling this way, that your anxiety or your your worry is misguided, um, that it's important to to believe that you can actually get to where you need to go to and to make a reasonable and practical plans towards reaching that goal. To be able to to work towards it in some way or the other, but believing is is actually the first step. So if you don't believe in it and you feel anxious uh, or, or sad or frustrated because you don't you want something but you don't believe you're going to get to it, then I want to suggest to you that you channel that anxiety or that upset feeling that you have towards believing towards starting to imagine again and you know sometimes it's hard to believe or it's hard to to simply think that you can have your your dreams that you can achieve you know uh what you it is that you you want to achieve but you know if you are in that situation then try to fantasize fantasize what it would be like what it would feel like to, to be in that situation that you truly desire being in if you're trying to do this with regard to another person it can be futile. The goals that you need to set out for yourself here or the or the object of this exercise, it needs to involve you and only you. If you're a parent and you are concerned about your, your child, this is this exercise that you need to do with yourself needs to ensure that you are taking care of your responsibilities, one of them being your, your children, but not being the object of your exercise. So this the object of your exercise needs to be you and what you desire and where it is that you wish to go to and this is really important okay so basically if you are trying to plan yourself around somebody else or plan yourself around um an, a person a love interest perhaps or or a parent or you know somebody else it's not going to work for you you need to actually understand that your time is passing and you need to concentrate on on you what is it that you desire the time that we have here is finite and you need to understand where you are in your station of life and what can you do for the, the rest of your life and where it is that you'd see, like to see yourself or what it is that you want to do with yourself. Don't, don't just blindly meander along because as you do so, you're losing something. You're losing something along the way. So make conscious steps and try to be um, as conscious as you can as you go along in, in your life. Now, I'm sure if you come to my readings or especially the weekly oracle card uh, guidance where, you know, the emphasis is more on soulful matters that you are doing this already. So th but this message is about that and it, it is about, um, it's kind of emphasizing that. So um, I, I think that's about it. I'm just going to pause and see if anything comes up. Okay, so one of the tendencies that make um, arise when you're in this process is to moan the time that you've spent or the uh, or what has passed. And um, there's a very strict voice here <laughs> telling me, don't you know, don't cry over spilled milk. Don't actually worry about what's passed. Just focus on on what's to be and what is right now and what and that you actually still have the power to define what is to be you might be in a situation where you feel no I can't actually do that you know I'm caring for my mother um, I have my kids and I can't really move to where I need to because I need to do all these things and you're feeling quite powerless in your situation or you're feeling like a victim almost of your situation and you're feeling like you can't really extract any joy or any passion in your life as a result of your situation well, what they think to me is that even in that situation, you actually, you can still define it. You can still 
choose what it is that you desire and you need to take back that control and take back that responsibility that you have towards yourself. So, um, yeah, that's it uh, for those of you who've chosen the sloth um, here. It's quite interesting that, uh, yeah, the sloth is uh, it's like a lazy character, right? And this card, is, this card is like basically saying, well, get on with it because there's no time to waste. And uh, the sloth is a character that would you know, take time quite casually. All right, so that's it for those of you who've chosen this option, and I hope wish you a lovely week ahead. Those of you who've chosen the uh, third option here, we're asking the question, what is it that you need to know for this week? What is, what is the message that you basically need to know to have right now? Okay, there it is. Feels like it's this one here. The Harlequin. The, and the caption here is two feelings are masked. So the first thing I'm getting here is is where are you portraying yourself as being happy and okay, but actually crying inside of you? Where is it that you actually have a face that you are presenting to the rest of the world as you okay, but in fact inside you are you you are experiencing feelings of sorrow, grief, sadness and something verging on a kind of depression. So I'm not saying that everyone who comes to this reading is, is clinically depressed. Please don't uh, hear me wrong. Um, but there are there is a sadness that's inside of you that you actually are not able to share with others. With these, uh, these feelings that you have, okay, if you're going to hide them, if you're going to continue hiding them or not sharing them with those, of you, with those who are close to you, then you would you continue to have a relationship with these people that is not really uh, a sincere relationship or not a relationship in which you are truly sharing with each other because you have not yet been able to be vulnerable with each other. You haven't shown each other the vulnerable aspect of you. And I feel like this is very much the situation with loved ones. But I also feel like for some of you, this might be between friends that you care about or um a relationship between a mother and a daughter so um or, or just a, a, a child and a parent so the thing i'm hearing here is that you know you feel like a part of you or some of you feel that uh it's important for you to keep that to yourself because the other party can't handle it or they won't be able to manage it but what I'm hearing here is that it's not your responsibility to take care of how they will respond to your vulnerability or your fears or your aggression or whatever it is. I'm not saying that you ought to be violent or anything here. But there's two parts here. There's the sadness and there's this anger and there's this feeling of being wounded that's, that exists inside of you, which you haven't had a chance to share with somebody as yet. And it's really important that you share this with them. And it doesn't matter what will come from the relationship thereafter. It's, but it's important for you to be able to share this with someone or with that person. Not with someone, but with this particular person. And with each of you, it will be a different person and or a different situation. It's, I'm getting here also with some of you, it's like with a boss, you know, and like really being able to tell, tell them exactly what you feel. And how it and how it uh, unfolds thereafter will actually surprise you. So it's you know if you're afraid that you're going to lose your job because you have because you know if you if you tell if you speak your truth, you might find that there's something else that happens that actually has a positive spin on it. Um, you know, and in, in different situations it will be different. For some of you, you will lose your job and you will actually find a job that's much better where you feel happier. And with regard to, and also for others, it might even be that, you know, this leads you to having some kind of promotion or extra, um, uh, like extra income or something like this. Um, but those are just very kind of brief, vague examples here. Uh, that's not going to apply to most of you. Uh, what I'm hearing here is that this person, the other person or the other people, they suffer from the fact that you're not being completely honest with them and that you're not able to be yourself with them. And it's really important that you are yourself with them, that your relationship with this person will actually benefit a lot from you being real with them. And this is not to say that you have not been real with them. You've, you're trying to be as sincere as you can, but somehow along the way, 
you have um, you have adopted a, a kind of behavior where you don't share what's really going on with yourself with these people and it's almost as if you you there's one part of you that's like not able to trust that or trust the response that you will receive as a result and there's another part of you which is almost ashamed of your own feelings or your and, you, and there's another part of you with which is like okay if i'm gonna say this it's gonna upset the apple cart and i'm just it's just not worth it you know uh, my feelings are not as important in this scenario uh, what is important is that I put on a brave face and I'm actually able to um, maintain uh, the harmony in the situation. So uh, what I'm hearing here as well is that aside from it being detrimental to your relationship and towards the, uh, to the other person, because it's not giving them a chance to grow if you're not being real with them and showing them as well, it's also not giving you a chance to grow. It's not giving you a chance to be who you are. And there's only so long that you can maintain this until you decide one day, okay, I've had enough of this. I can't take it anymore. I'm going to run away from it. And what I'm hearing is you don't need to actually run away from the situation. You just need to be upfront and to be to let them know how you feel, you know, let them know what it is that's going on inside of you. And this is not to spread yourself too thinly or it's not to actually, you know, re reveal something that's very personal to you. You don't need to put it all out there for them. What it, uh, what it, but what it requires is that you are honest about what it is that you're truly feeling or how it is that they make you feel or what, how it is that you experience yourself within a given situation. Okay, so the other thing I'm hearing here is this is the beginning of your maturity. This is the beginning of you maturing in a different direction. And this is the beginning of a whole new kind of relationship that you will have with yourself, where you take better care of yourself and you're not just existing so that you, uh, so that you can kind of conform or that you can uh, create harmony in other situations with uh, in situations with other people if you come to terms with how you really feel if you are honest with yourself if you can see yourself for how you really feel and come in touch with those raw emotions then you are have begun in your relationship with yourself and you're able to then begin healing that part of you that's been kept under covers or that's been festering perhaps under the covers and it's time to kind of throw open the curtains and just let, you know, open the windows and let that, let the wounds dry out. Let the the hurt uh, escape from you and not to keep it kind of locked inside of you, okay? Um, so these are quite specific messages here and they're quite, um, they, this, this third option here is quite different from the first two options, which felt... Uh, almost like two sides of a coin of um, of the same message, you know. And uh, I, th I feel like I've done a reading like this before. I'm getting this kind of deja vu feeling here. Yeah. The other thing I'm hearing is that you might be the kind of person who smiles when you feel nervous or that you are, um, you, kind of, you kind of hide your shyness or your hurt or your humiliation behind a smile or perhaps you laugh, or perhaps you, when you are feeling nervous, you just can't help but smile or laugh or grin. Yeah, the only thing I can really say here uh, for this card, the Harlequin, the only thing that's really relevant is that it's important to step out from behind this mask and it's important for you to get in touch with those feelings yourself, but also to let others share in that. And in doing so, you will have more harmonious and more authentic relationships in the long term. It might not be so in the short term, but it will certainly be so in the long term. Okay, so I hope that's been useful for you. These were quite um, specific messages that I've delivered for you today. And I see that the, uh, the channel doesn't really get many views for these Oracle card readings. So I think the messages become more uh, kind of... Um, specific because there are basically there are a fewer of, of you coming to the channel for these um, videos or for these weekly oracle um, readings and so uh, I guess on some level that's really great because you are getting some of you at least are getting uh, messages that really apply to you and that are quite specific uh, to you let me know how you felt about that and and if the, any of that resonated with you it would be a shame 
uh, <laughs> if none of that resonated with any of you. Uh, but I'm sure that uh, some of it will strike a chord. So do let me know how you find it. I'm wishing you a um, very beautiful, bountiful week ahead and blessings abound from Kismet Rising. <laughs>